Grand Rising, Nubian Guys and Goddesses, this is TB in Black Living Room Talk. Glad to be with you today, this rising. This right here, I am researching and reading about this uh, Septimius Severus. He overthrew Rome and began the Dark Ages approximately around 193 AD. You might want to check him out and see what our brother did. The music that I am listening to is on my TV, so I don't own the rights to that. So that they can just hear that right now on the rights to the music. It is playing in my home. So, but anyway, I didn't get to come back. Life happens. I was going to come back that evening after I did this chapter. So I'm at the end of this chapter, going into a new chapter. So I'm reading, I'm going to finish reading The Significance of Skin Color and Human Relations by Kenneth J. Jurgen. Now it is talking about skin color in the world of everyday relations. Let me turn this down real quick. I seem to keep getting interrupted too. But anyway, going into this, is if I have any comments, I'll stop. And because this is, you know, I'm, you know, a discussion, discussion book. Even though I'm in it by myself, you know, it's, you know, worth. It's, it's a discussion. I'm trying trying to discuss the book. You know, and talk about it, you know. So, so let's see what he says about this, you know. Skin color in the world of everyday relations. A person tends to categorize other people on the basis of overt physical differences and to invest these categories with certain connotative meanings. When such investments take place on a denotative level, they are often called stereotypes. The common tendencies to perceive Negroes as lazy, Jews as mercenary, and Japanese as shy have received keen attention in as much as they exemplify indiscriminate modes of thinking. There are also culturally shared stereotypes based on differences in clothing, club or group affiliations, and so on. People feel they know something about a person because he wears the uniform of a policeman or a soldier. The personalities of those affiliated with the extreme right versus left-wing political groups are commonly supposed to differ. Such stereotypes may have subtle but far-reaching influences on human relations. They tend to dull one's sensitivities to the truly individual qualities of the single other. Encountering another... People typically search for information that will allow them to act adaptively toward him. Once it has been found that the person can be stereotyped, the search for and sensitivity to more refined facts concerning the person may be sharply reduced. Thus, color-based categorization and resulting stereotyping can deter what may be termed personalistic encounters. In addition to reducing sensitivity, categorization also promotes object relations as opposed to person-centered relations. Rather than being engaged as a unique individual, the person who is marked as an exemplar of a group becomes an object. He will be identified, first of all, as Chinese or Negro. The difficulties in breaking through such categorizations to engage the man are considerable. In Buber's terms, the person who is classified on the basis of skin color becomes an it rather than a thou. For the person who may be potentially, who may potentially be discriminated against because of his skin color, additional liabilities may accrue. Being treated as a member of a category rather than as an individual, one tends to behave in ways that are consistent with the assigned category. If the person feels that others expect him to act differently, for example, the path of least resistance is to act in the prescribed manner. In this sense, stereotyping may tend to reinforce itself. In addition, unlike a uniform or group affiliation, Skin color cannot be donned or doffed as the situation as the situation may demand.
The person is thus placed at an important disadvantage because he must always present to others information about his racial background. In essence, he is disadvantaged with regard to information control in the situation. Lest this be taken lightly, one might envision a typical member of white society living out his public life with the world's middle class suburbanite. Less than a high school education, or I was four elf and blazing on his forehead. As a result of this uncontrolled presentation of information, the person is also forced to attend to its consequences. At the outset of relationships with persons of another racial grouping, he will be forced to seek cues as to the other's assessment of him. In essence, the internal logic might go, he sees I am Negro, then what does he think of Negroes? Once the search for cues has commenced, he is forced into an almost schizoid position. He must discriminate between reactions to his skin color as opposed to those relevant to him as a person. That's true. I've, I've, I know that to be true. And there's a, and being an, a black person in this country, yes, that is familiar to me. And I know it, 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 it's familiar. To he cannot be certain, in, in effect, whether a warm smile or a cold remark is a reaction to his racial category or to his more individual personage. Persons with wealth or power are faced with parallel problems. They cannot be certain whether their acceptance by another is personal or prompted by their position in life. Such persons are at an advantage, however, in that they often have greater control over the information available to others. In a society where race prejudice exists, the above problems are only exacerbated. In such cases, the person carries with him a constant reminder of his limitations, disadvantages, and diminished opportunities. These constant reminders serve only to support the low self-esteem syndrome referred to above. The description of some Negroes as being color-struck may be quite apt. For the strong at heart, skin color may produce overcompensation. Feeling others' discrimination, the Negro may strive all the harder to achieve or gain power. But the seeking of power, whether economic or otherwise, on strictly retaliatory grounds, may have unfortunate consequences within a society. Moreover, skin color serves as an easy scapegoat for the person who tries and fails. Rather than asking rational questions calculated to overcome past errors, the person may simply blame his failure on his skin color and ask no further questions. In all too many cases, however, the person's skin color may simply inform him that trying itself is fruitless. That trying itself is fruitless. The hurdles of racial equality may be high ones, indeed, and great preparation may be needed for the jump. The most direct mode of offsetting many of these problems may reside in programs of learning. Increased knowledge concerning persons of other races should serve to ameliorate many of the above conditions. In particular, knowledge of basic similarities is at a premium. Such similarities are most likely to be manifested prior to intensive subgroup acculturation, and thus the period of childhood is most strongly implicated as a teaching context. Discrimination, learning, and the area of color symbolism may also play an important role. Both this type of training, as well as training and breaking down stereotypes, work against the inertia of Im imprecise thinking. The ultimate solution may reside in the domain of racial homogenization. Hmm. So that is the very end of 
the significance of skin color and human relations. I will be reading the next chapter, The Social Perception of Skin Color in Japan by Hiroshi Wagasuma. Wow. So, I hope everybody has a wonderful day today. It is Saturday, November 18th. Can you believe it? Uh, the weather has been wonderful where I am. I hope in the Midwest. I hope it's all right where you are. I know we have weather fluctuations in many places, but um, I wish you all peace, love, and light. And please stay tuned to Black Living Room Talk. There's things coming together. And um, we're just all we're gonna we're gonna just keep gaining knowledge and and accept wisdom. But some people don't accept wisdom. Knowledge and wisdom go together. But um, please keep all your heads on a swivel. Pay attention to your surroundings at all times. We have so many things happening in this world today. I definitely play, pray for peace for family, peace for the world, peace for society, peace for our nation as a people to continue to come together. And it was like we, we, we've got to knit this back together. Because we have to have strength from within. We have to have strength from within to help our future generations so that they won't have the same fight that we have had. So with that, I will be. I will come back, but I don't know what day it's going to be. I can't, I can't even make those type of concrete, you know, promises with my schedule at this point so I just know that I'm true and and strictly organic I don't try to be there's nothing made up and fake about it but um I wish you peace love and light I am Miss Waheed hot up Hey, I just wanted to come back and tell you that I am sorry for the interruption that I had with the phone ringing. Every time I get busy to do something, it seems like either somebody's knocking at the door or somebody wants to call me. So please um, excuse that. And I hope that you were able to hear that. Um, And again, I wish you peace, love, and light. Hold up.